Hey guys, welcome back. So I'm gonna talk about something today that uh, I get a lot of requests for that I don't talk about all that often, and that's modern bolt-action rifles. I love bolt-action rifles, but mostly you're gonna see me shooting classic military bolt-action rifles. So the bolt-action rifle obviously goes way back in military history, but it also has a long steeped history within the American hunting community and globally, but I'm an American, so I focus on America. Anyway, so the rifle we have here today is a rifle that I came across that uh, really piqued my interest. Now, the reason it piqued my interest is because people, and I have a good friend that, that does this, and you probably know folks like them, that uh, they'll go out and they'll spend obscene amounts of money on bolt action rifles, things like Accuracy International rifles, trying to get the smallest group possible, mostly with factory ammunition. Hand loaders can push things even further. But if you can find a bolt action rifle that can shoot better than a minute with factory match ammunition, you're doing pretty good. And so I was introduced to this rifle, which I'm gonna call Bagara. But I already know you guys out there are gonna correct me. So let me have a Spanish speaker tell you how the name is pronounced here really quick. Bergara. Bergara. Okay. Now, I'm not going to pronounce it that way. We're in America and I call it Bagara. So that's how you properly pronounce it. So gotcha guys, all the trolls down there that want to, that speak Spanish and I don't. All right. So anyway, I was introduced to the Bagara rifles and I was told quite a bit about them. I've read about them online. I've seen people talking about them, talking about their accuracy and they're, they're manufactured in Spain and they're known for their barrels. And so a lot of the PR that you're gonna see uh, about these rifles, especially coming from Bagara, will talk about the manufacturing of the barrels and the attention that's paid to the barrels. And of course, the accuracy in a rifle, a lot of it has to do with the barrel, among other things. And we'll delve into some of the, the features of this rifle. But what blew me away is the rifle you're looking at here is the B14 HMR. This one's chambered in 6.5 Creedmoor, my pet long range cartridge. And it has a five round AICS magazine, which is kind of a standard these days. And this little guy can be had for less than $1,000, as you see it here, minus the optics and the Griffin Armament uh, Paladin suppressor on the end and without the bipod for Magpul. This rifle can be had for less than $1,000. So what type of accuracy can you expect from a rifle like this for less than $1,000? Can it really hold up to a gun that costs three, four, five times as much? That's what we're gonna talk about in this video. Let's get started. Got a little Caldwell Swinger out there hanging from some chains at 250. I'm gonna put five rounds on it here for you guys. Smooth as silk. We would like to thank our friends at Big Daddy Unlimited for helping to make this and other videos possible. If you'd like to help us out, swing by the BDU website and just for 99 cents, you can try out their service for one month. And they're basically like the Sam's Club of the online world. So check them out. If you would like to stay a member, go by militaryarms.org. There's a big link right at the top of the website and you can stay a member for 20% off every month going forward. So please check them out. Let's give you a quick breakdown of how I have the rifle configured here as you see it. So we have the base B14 HMR rifle. Each of the stocks is hand painted and you're not going to see two alike. So that's kind of cool. I, I like the color of the stock. The stock works good um, for either hunting around here and or match precision type shooting. And that's how the HMR B14 is, is advertised as a match or hunting rifle. The stock has a really comfortable, at least for my hands, uh, grip. I love this straight grip angle. The distance you have here between the face of the grip and the trigger. It comes back, has a sharp angle here. You can see how the, the bolt clears the riser here. The riser can be adjusted. You have this screw you can turn and loosen it and bring the cheek comb up and down and then lock it down by tightening it. It comes with different spacers with three. I've taken one out to shorten the length of pull a little bit, but it has adjustable length of pull. I believe in the uh, 
Bagheera online store, you can actually purchase an um, a end plate that will allow you to adjust the length of pull with screws, uh, much like you adjust the cheek comb. Don't hold me to that, but I believe I read that on their website. So it's a polymer type stock. It has their, uh, what they call, I believe, a micro chassis bedding in here. It's a free floated barrel. Uh, the rifle, as you see it here, I haven't weighed it, but without the can optic and all that stuff on, you're looking about nine and a half pounds. So once you start putting on the accessories, it's gonna get a little bit heavier. Probably you're looking around 15 pounds as I have this thing set up roughly with loaded field um, as I would take it into the field. The another, another nice thing about the stock is that it has QD mounts on both sides fore and aft, and um, that's a nice touch. So you don't have to worry about the sling swivels, which you do have down here for tr tr traditional slings as well. You have one for a bipod, which I've used to mount the Magpul, and then you have another one that you can use for traditional sling. And then you have a rear stud back here too. So you have the option of the QD, or you have the option of the traditional hunting sling. As I mentioned, the rifle uses AICS magazines, pops right in to the bottom. You have ambi release. You can release it from either side just by pushing forward and it does push straight in and locks right in. Has a nice large bolt handle on it, which you know a lot of folks will add on to Remington 700s and Model 70s, things like that. So it comes with this large tactical bolt handle, which gives you great leverage. On top, we have an American Rifle Company scope mount. This is from Copper Custom. On top of that, we have the GLX 4 to 16 power with, the fit, with a 50 millimeter uh, objective lens. And this is a first focal plane mill scope. And so it has uh, mill adjustments and a mill reticle, a traditional military style mill reticle with just the mill dots in it. It doesn't have a Christmas tree like an H59 in it. Out on the end of my 24 inch barrel, and this is a 4150 chromoly barrel, and it has a one and eight twist. And this one's 24 inches. At the end, I have the Griffin Armament uh, Paladin suppressor, and it does have a 5 8 by 24 thread on the end. Again, we have the Magpul bipod on here. You can adjust the tension on it. It lets you rock. And of course, you can also um, extend the legs, things like that. And it does fold the legs away. So kind of first time playing with the Magpul. Uh, bipods. I like to use the Atlas bipods, but they're really expensive. This is a nice uh, alternative that's not going to cost you $250, $300. So I think that pretty much covers off everything that I have on the gun and how I have it configured out here this afternoon. Now, the thing that really, that when I first got this rifle out of the box and started to uh, shoot it, get it zeroed, get the scope set up, I was loading my AICS mags. These are five round mags. And typically when I'm loading a, a bolt action, either a military bolt action or even my pet Desert Tech SRS A1, when you go to chamber around, you can feel when that round goes into battery. I could not feel that gun pick up that round. And the safety is right here by my thumb, back is safe, forward is fire. I can't feel it. And so many times when I'm firing the gun, if I'm not counting shots, you'll see me reach up and touch the nose of the bullet to see if I have another round in there before I close the bolt. It is so smooth. And everybody that shot it has said the exact same thing. Even Jason uh, you know, pulled the bolt back, thought the gun was empty. He didn't close it and it didn't make an unsafe condition. But he's like, dude, I agree with you. I, I, I forgot there was one more round in there. I can't feel a, a round when I close the bolt. And so it is really that smooth. And we'll show you what the bolt looks like here in a moment. Now, I've loaded five rounds of Federal Gold Medal Match. This is 140 grain, and this is supplied to us by our friends at Federal. They do support us here at the channel with ammunition. And this is great match ammunition. And with this ammo, this gun, every time I've put it on paper, this gun is never shot over a half a minute. And a lot of people will cherry pick groups. And I'm gonna show you three strings that I fired with this rifle on a cold bore. So I fire five shots, let the rifle cool back to ambient temperature because cold bore shots are critical to me as a hunter. Um, and I, I, you know, five shots is all I really care about on a rifle like this. Some folks will say you need to shoot 10 rounds to get a really good idea of the, the accuracy of the gun. True, but when I'm hunting, I'm not gonna fire 10 rounds in an animal, especially with a bolt action. I want maybe one, one, maybe two rounds. So that cold bore shot going to the same spot every time is what I care about. So every time I put this, this thing on paper, 
it's a half MOA gun using this ammunition. And that's not cherry picking groups. I mean, and that's shooting off, this is a Caldwell stable table, but this isn't the most solid table. I mean, it, it, is, it does move and shooting off a bipod with just a wee bad bag in the rear, it's not like clamped to a concrete table. And that is pretty impressive accuracy. Now let me take that back. That is really impressive accuracy out of this rifle. And it is consistent. Those cold bore shots every time go right where I want them. So I've loaded five rounds into the gun and I'm just gonna shoot out to 250 yards. I want you to see how the, how the gun works. I want you to see the action of the gun, just how smooth it is. And the ergonomics on it, again, are just really to my liking. This rifle really, really just, it just fits me perfectly and allows me to shoot it really, really well. So when you get on the gun, I'm gonna have to go low here because we're gonna go far. When you get on the gun, you have your thumb will come over the top if you want it to, but when I'm shooting this type of a rifle, I'm trying not to grip the weapon. I just kind of want to rest my hand there, kind of index, and then my finger, the pad of my finger falls perfectly on this, this trigger. It's a very narrow, flat trigger with a smooth surface, has a wide shoe to it, and it's kind of rounded. It feels really good, all right? So when I get on the rifle, take that safety off, get on target downrange. Now I've dialed a mil of elevation in for my 250 yard target, get stable, and then I just lay my finger, the pad of my finger on that trigger, and I kind of rest my thumb here. It's like a natural rest spot for me. and gives me all the leverage I need to touch off, and it's a three pound trigger. I could not feel that gun pick up a round. So I, every other gun I've ever owned, now some people see it, maybe think, think that was a, a bad thing, because you want to know that gun's loaded, but it's never misfed. But it's so smooth, it's so impressive. You just have to try it if um, you're a bolt action shooter. And I'm sure there's some you know, custom Sturgis actions and stuff like that people spend thousands and thousands and thousands of dollars on uh, that do the same thing. But for me, this is probably the smoothest bolt action I own. wasn't counting so I just checked because again I cannot tell when I close the bolt. She's empty. That is a very smooth shooting rifle. Now again incredible accuracy cleaning. You have a button over here on the left hand side of the receiver. All you have to do is push that button in and when you do that, just draw the bolt to the rear and the bolt comes out. Next, we're gonna talk about the bolt because the bolt has uh, a design feature that I really like. And I'm gonna talk about the shape of the bolt and things like that. And I think it helps uh, in getting that really, really smooth action that the rifle has. Jason and I always joke about saving our wives at 200 yards. So at 200 yards, we have a challenge steel hostage taking target and you can pick those up. We have a discount code for challenge steel targets in the video description down below. And uh, yeah, you can save a few bucks if you want to pick up a target like this. And these are really cool targets to shoot at. Uh, you can adjust how much they flex after being hit. There's a little sliding bar. You can make them rigid. You can move that bar down and take it off and then they'll move wildly after being hit once making the follow up shot even harder. All right, so I have five rounds of the Federal 140 grain gold medal match loaded. And let's see if I can save my wife. I was going to check and it flicked it out. I lost count of my rounds. Again, I cannot tell when it picks up a round. 
and I was just going to pull the bolt back a little bit and touch it and see, and I actually accidentally pulled it back too far. And that was my fifth round. So yeah, guys, this thing really, really shoots amazingly well. I, mm, I love this rifle. The bolt on the rifle is a two lug design. You'll notice that there's a slight taper cut to the two lugs on the face of the bolt. You'll also notice, here's your extractor. I'm gonna talk about that here in a moment because it has something that it does I think is really cool. But when I put a round in there, you'll see how the rim of the case sets inside. So unlike a Mauser type action where the rim slides up a flat face bolt under the extractor, this is different in that it has a pocket on the bolt face, more like a Model 700, where it holds the, the rim of the case in the same spot every time. All right? Some folks like that, some folks like the Mauser type action. And then you have a plunger assembly over here, which is your ejector, which is going to flick the spent case out when you go to cycle the action. Now here's the other thing that I think is really cool. So many times you'll see me single loading this rifle and people will say, you know, when you single load a rifle, you're gonna break your extractor. There's a slight taper to the face of the extractor on this bolt. Watch that extractor, it moves, but it slides left and right. So when I single feed this gun, when it pops over the rim, that extractor will move sideways and then pop back over and grab the rim. So no, you're not gonna break your extractor on this rifle. That's pretty cool. I really like the design. Again, it is so silky smooth, it's ridiculous. On the rear end of the rifle, if you look right here, you can see when your striker is back. Go ahead and make sure that the weapon is clear. And then when you fire, you can see the red on top of the striker, and now that striker is home, meaning the gun is fired. So you have a visual indicator right there, so whether or not the weapon is cocked. Now, I haven't tried this on a lot of my military guns. You can hold the trigger and close the bolt, yep. So you can decock that striker by holding the trigger back, pushing the bolt home, and that striker will go home and decock it and relieve that spring tension. So that to me guys is really, really cool. Over all, I really am impressed with the overall design and quality of the rifle. The fitment and everything like that is just so spot on and you just can't argue with the accuracy of it. Another target we have downrange at 200 yards is the rifle dueling tree from Challenge Target. And it's rifle rated so it can take these 6.5 Creedmoor rounds in stride. So let's work that tree. We have four plates. And we're gonna see if we can swing all of them to the right. All right. So another thing you have to worry about today is hot, muggy day. I don't have a wrap on the suppressor. And one of the reasons why I don't is because this scope is sitting so low that it actually comes into the field of view on my 24 inch barrel. And so now I have a horrible mirage. It looks like water downrange. So we're gonna let the rifle cool off. And it's gonna take it a while to do so because of the heat and very little wind that we have. But uh, yeah, <laughs> I've said it many times in this video. I love this rifle. I've been shooting this rifle now for a couple of months. I've put well over 500 rounds through it and I've really come to appreciate the rifle. You know, like I said, you can go out and spend thousands more than this rifle to get comparable accuracy. Now the accuracy that I'm seeing out of this thing right around a half a minute um, could be tightened up even more if I were a hand loader and I wanted to spend time developing a load specifically for the rifle. Uh, so, I mean, the accuracy of this rifle is just astounding for being less than $1,000. The downside, now you can pick this rifle up in other calibers than 6.5 Creedmoor. You can get it in 22 250, and they have, I think, six millimeter PRC, uh, even calibers like 450 Bushmaster. Uh, 
if you shoot the hot rod calibers like I do, the 6.5 Creedmoor, I wouldn't mind having one in 22-250 for varmint hunting. You do have that shorter barrel life. You're looking at right around 3,000 rounds. Most people will tell you if you take care of the barrel, don't get it too hot, let it cool down. And of course, that's what I'm doing to this rifle. With this rifle, unlike my Desert Tech, my Desert Tech, which costs several thousand dollars more than this, I can swap the barrel out in a matter of minutes and have a brand new barrel in the gun. With this rifle, when this barrel shot out, I got to send it in and have it rebarreled. Now, the barrel for the Desert Tech is about $1,400. I could buy a whole new rifle for less than a thousand if I stuck with the Bagara. You're going to find me shooting this rifle quite a bit. Uh, we got some hunts planned coming up. I'm pretty sure I'm going to take this rifle out. I do love the bullpup design because it's shorter, handier with the same barrel length. But uh, I, I want to try messing around with this rifle. This rifle has really piqued my interest. I think because of the price point of this rifle, it really represents an exceptional value for somebody that wants to get into long range precision shooting with the available ammunition out there. In 6.5 Creedmoor, the Federal Gold Medal Match shoots good out of a toilet paper tube. And in this rifle, it shoots extremely well. I also highly recommend checking out the Primary Arms. Uh, this is a GLX series scope. Uh, these scopes are made in Japan. They have really good glass in them. They track well. Uh, this one's in mills and again represents a very good value. You can go out and spend three thousand, four thousand dollars on a high-end scope, but this scope has done everything that my more expensive scopes do as well. So you'll see me using the primary arms optics quite a bit on my precision rifles. Griffin armament cans, great on bolt guns. Uh, you know, I've, I've just started using this Magpul bipod. I'm a reserve judgment on that, but it seems to be doing pretty good. I like the features of it. And that's it, guys. I'll uh, keep you updated. If anything changes, you'll probably, again, see me in the field with it. And yeah, I, I, I can't say enough nice things about it. Guys, if you'd like to support us in our mission to continue to bring you honest, unbiased information as humanly possible, please consider becoming a Patreon supporter. There's a link down in the video description. Give that link a click and consider supporting us here at the Military Arms Channel because YouTube has demonetized us because we talk about firearms. Also, right here on YouTube, underneath the video player, there's a little join button. Click that join button. You can support us right here on YouTube. So consider doing that. And last but not least, guys, please swing by and check out coppercustom.com. Thanks for 12 years of support. We'll talk to you guys soon.